Anton Alakhanov, who is the head of the Russian Federation's Ministry of Industry and Trade, told the press in July that the project to make the Russian-Belarusian plane, OSVE, has reached all of its goals. Russia is seeking a positive response from its Belarusian colleagues before continuing to work on the design documentation. Russia and Belarus will work together to develop the future LMS-192 OSVE turboprop plane, which will take its first flight in 2026. The 558th Aircraft Factory in the Brest area of Belarus and the Russian Ural Civil Aviation Plant, UZGA, work together to design the plane. When the project is completed, a 19-seat mid-size propeller plane with two engines will replace the Czech L410. In a recent interview with Vedomosti, UZGA's CEO Leonid Luzgin revealed that the company has finished the technical design of the plane and has started work on the working design documents. These are currently being approved in Belarus. The first deliveries of planes are set to begin in 2027. The VK800S propeller engine is one of the wholly Russian parts that will be in the new plane. The engine is also being made by UZGA, and it should be approved by the end of 2025. A different version of this engine will also be put into the LMS-901 Baikal, a difficult single-engine plane for local lines that is made at the Ural plant. The Russian state program anticipates the delivery of 158 Osves between 2027 and 2030. With this plane, Belarus will finally be able to make airplanes, which has been a long-held goal. During the time of the Soviet Union, Belarus had a special and important role in the USSR's unified aviation industry. Not so much as places where full-scale airplanes were made, the big plants in Minsk, Baranovichi, and Orsha were known as places where equipment was repaired and updated, and where single units and precision parts were made. One example is that the Minsk Aircraft Repair Plant fixed up big planes like the Tu-134, Yak-40, and Yak-42. The Minsk Aircraft Repair Plant had to train experienced pilots, technicians, and engineers to maintain and fly new types of planes. Such training was possible thanks to a well-developed network of specialized educational institutions and close ties with Russian aviation holdings. The overall aviation complex of the Belarusian SSR met standards set by the central government, provided parts, and made sure that planes used across the Soviet Union were safe to fly. As soon as the Soviet Union broke up and Belarus became independent, the country's aviation business was in a weak spot. Most companies lost sales quickly when they could no longer link with Russia and other republics or were able to link only occasionally. In the early 1990s, the Belarusian government tried to start its own projects to make light multi-purpose airplanes. It did this by starting a number of ambitious programs. For instance, there was a plan to make a domestic plane called the Belarus Series, working with Russian and even Italian partners. A design studio was also set up to handle this project. The main idea was to use the Baranovici Aircraft Repair Plant's production ability and get people to invest. A memorandum on cooperation between Russia and Belarus was signed in 1993, but none of the developed airplanes were put into mass production because of the economic crisis, political unrest, and lack of money. The goals weren't met, the program was scaled back, and the people who started it had to accept that they couldn't build a full-scale aircraft industry in Belarus without a serious partner and access to Russian technologies. Today, Belarusian aircraft manufacturing is more or less a standardized process that focuses on repairs, upkeep, modernization, and the local production of parts rather than the full-cycle production of new aircraft. For example, at the Minsk Civil Aviation Plant No. 407, a new, state-of-the-art facility for painting the fuselage and performing technical maintenance has been opened. This is where both Belarusian and Russian planes, including big ones like the Tu-214 and Tu-154, are serviced and repaired. The company has brand new, up-to-date tools, and the workers are being retrained to keep things running smoothly 
and improve their professional skills in the field. Bilateral efforts between states to replace imports and work together on developing technologies are now essential for the sector to stay alive. Belarus has also kept its role as a major post-Soviet aircraft repair center and has been training skilled workers for both its own needs and Russia's. Russia has become much more involved in helping the Belarusian aviation business grow and develop over the past few years. Russia and Belarus have become more integrated despite large-scale sanctions and the loss of Western markets. They have signed new agreements to jointly produce light aircraft, for example, the Osve project, and build shared infrastructure for aircraft repair and maintenance. With Russian loans, investments, and technology help, Belarus is able to keep, improve, and partially grow its production capabilities. This helps to keep operations going and start new projects together. Experts say that the partnership model with Russia is exactly what makes it possible for Belarus to start new production lines, take part in programs that replace imports, and get access to current developments that the country could not make on its own. Taking these trends into account, we can guess that by 2050, the only long-term possibility for the Belarusian aviation business will be closer ties with Russia. As long as the Allied development model stays in place, Belarus is likely to remain a major hub for repairing, servicing, and putting together light and regional aircraft. Belarus will also continue to manufacture some fuselages and components as part of the unified Union state. There could be more expertise and the start of full-fledged joint productions that can sell their goods in third-country markets. If, on the other hand, cooperation with Russia is cut back, the technological gap would cause most projects to end and the output base to eventually get worse. Key factors will include the amount of help from Russian development institutions, the appearance of big investment deals in space technologies, and the growth of cooperation in science and education. As a result, by the middle of the century, there will likely be a lot more joint Belarusian-Russian companies in the Union State's aviation industry. Belarus will continue to serve as a dependable partner and a testing ground for innovative aircraft concepts in the region. If you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe. Also, please take our channel membership, which is very affordable, to encourage us.